what up it's famicom again and i'm here with another manga haul which um i've been recent like consistently uploading stuff on the channel but in terms of me recording things it's been about like two weeks because i've just been so busy so i have tons and tons of manga to, to actually showcase but i picked a couple of them uh, just for this video i'll like split it up over the next couple of videos probably but to start things off, something that I was very excited about was this book here. So, I Wish I Was Stupid by Ebisu Yoshikazu. The English version that finally came out by Breakdown Press. Amazing, amazing cover. So, I've already read this and I did a video uh, looking at the Ebisu books that I own. But finally, this came out. I'm so happy it came out. And I'm so happy other people are getting into Ebisu and enjoying Ebisu um, and his works because we need more stuff. Uh, I didn't get the Pits of Hell reprint because I already do have um, Pits of Hell in Japanese. But here you go, translated by Ryan Holmberg. Here are the stories. And surprisingly, I didn't expect it, but we get some color pages uh, from uh, for the start the, the, the start of the, the book, the very first story, Intellectual Reports. I was not expecting this because the, the original Japanese has um, the same color pages, which is pretty cool that we have it uh, in the English version as well. But yeah, uh, as I said before in one of the previous videos, this story uh, collection is probably one of the craziest, definitely crazier than Pits of Hell. 100%. There you go. That's the cover that was used. Yeah, so nice. Oh, yeah, so happy to see this finally out. So pick that up if you can because we need more Ebisu. Definitely need more Ebisu because. I actually got some more Ebisu here. So this is my most recent uh, addition to the very unfortunate and very small Ebisu collection I have right now. So this book here is titled Watashi no Kare wa Imi ga nai, which means that my boyfriend is meaningless. Something like that. Ebisu's crazy world. Here's the back of it great stuff. I haven't, again, because this is a manga haul, I haven't read any of these yet, but here is the inside of the stories here. And I believe all of these stories were not, uh, none of them were actually published in Garu. If I go to the back here, for example, um, all of them are from 82. Yeah, actually all of them are from 82. Uh, I've never heard of any of these like magazines before, like manga, piranha, uh, what is it there? Girl and girl, snob down here. Yeah, so none of these are uh, were serialized series, in Garo. So I've never heard of these before. It's very interesting. But um, this one here is a very iconic panel. I've seen this before somewhere, I don't know where, but loving the yellow, the first story. Super vibrant, super vibrant. I did I didn't do a flick through of this before. It gets a little wild. So as usual, gotta be careful, but yeah, Ebisu is the Heta Uma King, one of the Heta Uma kings. So here you go, can't wait to get into this. I actually have more Ebisu stuff, which I'll save for another video because I really need to update my Ebisu books. I need more Ebisu, so much more Ebisu. This is crazy stuff. Out of context, damn. There's signature, of course, a signature art style with crazy salaryman adventures as per usual 
all the good stuff that you would want to see in an ABC read. So there you go. Yeah, can't wait to get into this as well. Love the color. So that was some of um, my ABC pickups recently. I got more, but again, probably another video. I'll show them off. Now, on top of that, pretty much I think everything today is from Garo. Well, I mean, this. Uh, ABC was serializing Garo, but all the stories weren't in Garo here. Um, but all other books, yeah, I noticed were all Garo related. So I picked up uh, Suge Yoshiharu's The Swamp, number one in the English uh, releases. The very first one that came out, we've got an afterword by Mitsuhiro Asakawa. Translated. When did this come out, actually? This came out before I actually got into uh, Gekiga. This is just a little summary of Tsuge. And here's the essay. I don't exactly know when this came out. Should have checked before this, but I just wanted to record straight away. There you go. So all of these here came out in Garo. And I actually read a lot of these stories in uh, the Tsuge Yoshiharu special issue that I have in Garo. But I picked this up because I wanted to read some of the other ones. So I haven't read like The Phony Warrior, Watermelon Sake. Um, I haven't read Secondhand Book, Strange Letter, Ninjess. And I do want um, to read the, the essay as well. So I'm kind of going backwards-ish. I started off with um, like Neji Shiki. And I've just been going backwards um, in time to see his works. Chirpy was a great one. Mushroom Hunting was great too. A lot of good stuff. I need to just like find time to... Because I picked up Nijushiki, the most recent drawn and quarterly release uh, in English. And I really want to read that like half book essay that Ryan Holmberg put out. But I just got to find the time for it. But yeah, pick this up as well. I do need to pick up... What was the other one? This one was The Swamp. The other one was like red flowers or something. Got to pick that up too. So yeah, that's Tsuge Yoshiharu. I'm picking up some more English stuff along the way too. Then we have some more Heta Uma. This time a very famous masterpiece it's considered. Uh, this here is Penguin Rice by um, King Terry, Yumura Teruhiko, who did the artwork, and Itoi Shigekito, no, Shigesato, who did the story. So this was serialized in Garo, and I got, I managed to find the big version of this book. So I know there's like a Bunko version, like a little tiny uh, versions of these books, but I really wanted to find the giant version. And I'm so happy I got this because King Terry has been an obsession as of late. The Hetauma God. Here is the table of contents. Lamina Terreno Gonzo. Of course, King Terry has many nicknames. But starting off the story, we are graced with a beautiful Hetauma color pages of the story. So I know nothing about Penguin Rice. Don't know what it's about. Don't know if it's like one story or collection of different stories. But King Terry is King Terry. This is the only manga he has put out. And I mean, he didn't even do the story. It was just the, um, the art he did. But super excited to get into this one. I've been picking up a lot of his um, like Gara issues as well. A lot of the Gara issues in like the 70s and 80s, like uh, certain years, they had their covers illustrated by him. Been collecting those, but 
we need, everyone needs some Heta Uma goodness in their lives. And Penguin Rice is, oh, I'm so excited to get into this. Super, super excited. Got more color pages as well. Yeah, let me just quickly go back. There was a, let's say when it was published. Oh, I don't know. Ashola. I don't know the, 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 the years. I gotta check that. I'll put that in the notes. But yeah. King Terry Penguin Rise, Penguin Gohan. Super excited for this one. Super happy that I got this. And speaking of uh, being super happy about certain pickups, this here was a very big highlight for me during the past month. This is a Garo issue from 1973 with a cover, a beautiful cover by Suge Tarao. This was the only issue I was missing in my 1973 set for so long and I managed to find it and I'm so happy I finally secured it. So now I have my first four year set from Gara, a 1973 set. All the covers look amazing. Um, I'll show them off in the video one day, but uh, yeah, this cover here is one of my favorites of all time in Gara. Super interesting use of color but it fits so well. And as usual, Garo is always, always, always stacked with amazing artists and mangaka. So here's the opening page. And let's see who we have. Tsuge Taro, Oji Suzuki, Nagashima Shinji, uh, Kusunoki Shohei, Hanawa Kazuichi, Kawasaki Yukio, Susumu Katsumata, Fujisawa Mitsuo, oh, I forgot the names of the other ones, uh, Abe Shinichi, so a very, very stacked uh, issue here. And a lot of these like 73, 72, especially 72, 1972 issues I found are very expensive for some reason compared to the other um, issues. Not sure why, but I have a couple of them and they are amazing, of course. So maybe, maybe it was someone debuted in 1972. I know there was a lot of Mizuki Shigeru stuff in there as well. Uh, but yeah, for some reason, they're kind of expensive. Same with 1973, to be honest. So special years, I guess. Uh, but yeah, we've got a story. It's like a Taro story. Ryu no Kaeruhi. It's like the return of Ryu. Not sure. Oh, chapter, chapter two. Not sure if this is translated in English. But I'll do a flip through of this again because this is a manga haul. I've never actually read any of these, but here you go. This is the original panel. Color page. Original panel and color page. So yeah, I've never seen this story before in any of the English versions of Tarao's work. But I'll just do a quick flip through. Oh, this reminds me of someone. Who's that? Sabu? <laughs> Looks like Sabu. Sabu the Bruiser. Refining, of course. Then you have some Oji Suzuki Gekiga action. Love it. Very confusing stories, but love the atmosphere. Love the vibe of his works. And here we go. Nagashima Shinji. I'll read this eventually and I'll make a video on this as well. Kusunoki Shohei. Extremely detailed backgrounds and landscapes. Damn. Really want to read this, actually. Hanawa Kazuichi, of course. The Edo Guro God. Who else do we have? Kawasaki Yukio. To be honest, I, I've read a couple of uh, Kawasaki stuff. I I don't know, maybe not my thing, to be honest. Yeah, not entirely my thing, but could be anyone else's thing. Just not me. Got some Susumu Katsumata, of course. He does a lot of full Yonkoma. Fujisawa Mitsu. This, oh, I don't know how to read this yet. Never seen this person, uh, this one cut before, but look at the detail in that art. I need to find more about this manga because 
That art style is crazy detailed. Look at that facial expression. The background, the lines, the artwork. Definitely got to research more about that. Damn. Who's this? Oh, I forgot how do you read this? Taka? Mm. No, I'm not going to try. <laughs> I forgot what, how to read that kanji. Uh, yeah, some musical stuff and some Abe Shinichi. If you don't know who uh, Abe is, he did, he had a work called that Miyoko Asagaya feeling that was released in English by Black Hook Press. I believe so. It's, it's kind of out of print, so hard to find. But in the same vein as uh, Oji Suzuki, some you know, some Gekiga goodness, of course. But yeah, and this this last page here is um, by Hayashi Sheishi. It's advertising his uh, like collection of works. So yeah, super happy that I finally have this in my collection. Now my 1973 set is fully complete. And I can't wait to get into that, into reading all of them. Finally, finally. So super happy with that one. And speaking of, you know, some more Garo, of course. Here is on the opposite end. Let's skip a like 30, 40 years in the future to 2020. This here is Suge Taro's most recent manga release. So this was published in 2020. If I go here, like Medu Comics. 2020. He's still creating works. I don't think his brother is. I don't think Yoshihara is. Um, but still creating works. I believe right now uh, Taro, Suge Taro is like running a jeans shop, a family jeans shop, something like that. And he still draws manga on the side and released this. Wasure, wasure ga taki. I'm not going to try to read it. But I believe it's titled like those who are forgotten something like that oh, i should have checked before this my japanese is extremely bad of course but let's flick it open yeah it's just so cool like going into you know my my geki reading journey reading slum wolf trash market you know so you get the the cult star uh, in in Gara, in my opinion, back in the seventies and the eighties, and then now we have like a twenty twenty release from him. The most recent, only you know, a couple of years ago, this was released by him, which is so cool, so cool to see. You know, a legend still creating manga. And yeah, this is what his most recent work looks like. Take a look at the, of course, iconic art style. And character de designs he still has a lot more cleaner now that you'll notice as well. But that iconic sort of character designs that he has. And yeah, I don't know the, the story of this uh, manga either. I believe Tata also like in an interview he stated how he didn't really like the way he drew like female characters. He couldn't really get them down, something like that. Don't quote me on that. But I've always found his character designs, oh, his character designs, so like they draw you in because a lot of the times, like for example, going back to the Garu issue, like. They're so creepy, they're so raw. A lot of the facial expressions as well. So which is like my main the main appeal of Tarao's art style to me, to be honest. Yeah, lots of text. Actually now I look at it, a lot of text. Something that I noticed in like Slumwolf, for example, is like his I don't I feel like there wasn't as much text. But in this case it looks like there's Lots and lots of text on on each page. So yeah, eventually I'll get into reading this too. I'm you know super busy at the moment, and I've got a lot of books like stacked up. Um, so it'll be a while before I actually you know 
finish reading all of them. But what's the time? 20 minutes. Let's let's see what else we have actually, because I want to make it like I usually do them in like uh, these videos in like 30 minute, 40 minute chunks. So why not just pull up random books from stacks? Okay, this is a cool one. This is the most recent release from Sakabashira Imiri, who serialized in Garu. In, in the later decades, like, I'm not sure if it was 80s, but definitely 90s onwards. Um, and here, it's called New Kekia Company History. So the story behind this is, this is uh, published by Seirin Kogeisha, who is a publisher for Axe Magazine. It's a redrawing of a very old work by Sakabashira in a gigantic... Let me just take this out. This book is gigantic, by the way. I don't know if the, you can tell, but I believe it's 400 pages. Yeah, it's like near 400 pages. 400 pages of Sakabashira artwork is... Oh my god, it's so worth it. I think all up... From Amazon, at least. I bought this from Amazon, like straight from Zedin Kogeisha. Like with shipping, like 50 bucks AUD. Super worth it for a 400 page book of quality artwork by Sakabashira. So, yeah, this was a redrawing from one of uh, Sakabashira's old works, which apparently is hard to get in an all new gigantic book format. But I can't get enough of Sakabashira's artwork. I've actually not read much from him in terms of his manga. I recently bought The Boxman, the English release uh, by. Is it drawn in quality? I think so. Um, I haven't read that yet, though. But I do want to get into that sometime. From some of the Axe issues I've read, I've seen some works from him as well. But I follow him on Instagram. Of course, I've seen his artwork everywhere. Amazing artwork. He's even got some uh, posters from uh, Le Denis Cree, the French publishing house who publishes uh, and, and prints a lot of um, posters from Garo contributors and Heta Uma artists, illustrators. Yeah, take a look at like some of this, for example. And if you don't know as well, uh, Sakabashira is also known for his like softy toys. So he also sells and makes designs, and they also appear in his um, stories too. Softbee toys, or like kaiju monsters, which is pretty cool. I'm not, personally, I'm not into Softbee too much. I don't really know too much about it either. But it's cool to see how like diverse his art is. He also like, pretty sure he makes music too. Uh, he makes music as well. I've seen it posted some sometimes on his is um instagram and twitter but yeah that is the new k car company history no idea what this is about but oh it's such a uh such a big book super worth it yeah i i got this from amazon japan as soon as it came out i pre-ordered it actually i keep an eye on <laughs> a lot of um saying cool geisha's works because at least for Australia, like in terms of the, the this recent releases they have, so like new Axe issues or anything like that, I usually get them off of Amazon Japan. So I just pre-order it. I've got a couple more pre-orders coming in. But yeah, that is um, immediate. And speaking of Seiden Kogesha, uh, the most recent Axe magazine issue that I have is volume or issue 155 featuring cover art by yes kago shintaro this is as of right now the most uh, recent uh, axe issue they release um an issue every two months so this one there's going to be another one in january coming out in january 2024 uh, at the back just of course advertising this book here, the new K car history with the iconic cat character that you see a lot uh, in Sakabashira's work. So yeah, and this one I haven't read this either. A lot of things I haven't read, but there's like a 
interview information about Kago Shintaro. Of course, I also bought this recently too. Icon, Muni no Daichi. Yeah, I'll just do a flick through of some of the stuff in X. I do have a lot of axe issues waiting for me as well. Got to read them too, but as always with axe, with oh, there's Koichimatsu. Yet another chapter. Yeah, as with um, axe, as with Garo, so much variety in their in in their issues. You pick up one issue, you get so much diversity. In terms of storytelling and art styles, I always say this. That's why I love these works so much from, you know, Serin Do, Serin Kogesha, alternative manga in general, so much to offer. Yeah, just pick up, like, even if you don't speak Japanese, read Japanese, just having one of these volumes or issues, it's just so worth it to just look at the art, appreciate, you know, all the work put into these amazing stories. But yeah, that is the most recent issue of X155. And yeah, might as well keep going. So, most recent issue of X. Why don't we go to the opposite end and look at one of the oldest. Garo issues I have in my collection. So, Garo started in 1964. This here is a 1965 issue. 1965 February, the sixth ever issue to come out for Garo, has the third chapter of Kamuiden. Of course, with a cover page by Shirato Sanpe, Akame Pro. Here's the back of it. And surprisingly, this um, issue right here is more like is better conditioned than some of like my like seventies issues or eighties like issues. This one was really well kept for some reason. Like, even just opening it, so sixty five. How many years old is this? Thirty five plus twenty three. So that's like fifty eight. I can't. Yeah, yeah, fifty eight years old. And it's so well kept. Like even the pages inside. There we go. Chapter 3 of Kamui Den, which, uh, if you didn't know, Kamui Den got a, an announcement. It is being released in English starting from next year by John and Corley. Extremely excited for that. But yeah, we've got Kamui Den, we've got a Mizuki Shigeru story, uh, some other people. Is that, a, is that Kusinoki Shohei? I think so. Yeah. But if you just look at the, the pages themselves, not that much. Damage, wear, just a little bit of yellowing. It smells a bit, but that's of course with any Garo issue in general. But just looking at the, the page quality of like this book, one of the one of the earliest issues of Garo. Yeah, number six. And this is the earliest one I have in my collection. Uh, it'd be a dream to own number one, 1964. But that's just a dream at the moment. So yeah, very long chapters of Kamui. Uh, it is a it is a, like a, a thinner sort of issue compared to the later issues as well. Of less pages. Yeah, a lot of Kamui stories. There should be a Mizuki Shigeru. Yeah, Mizuki Shigeru story. Classic stuff. What else is there? Doya. Not too sure. Seems like another samurai story. But yeah, this one I also got recently as well. So we kind of have like both sides of the spectrum. The oldest Gara issue I have, and the most recent uh, axe issue that I have. So yeah, I just wanted to pull it out for that. And I think I want to do one more. Um, one more, one more book showcase, one more manga showcase. I think I have a, I have a lot. I'm, I'm just looking at my trolley right now, so give me one second. I'll just put this here for you guys to look at. Let's see what I can show 
off. Oh, okay, yeah. This will be fitting. Why? Because there is, or oh, from Starfruit Books, they are releasing Panorama of Hell by Kino Hideshi in English. And this here is the best works of Kino Hideshi. And it's quite a, actually quite a small book if you compare it to like, just take the axe issue. This is the size of it. So I compare it to Sakabashira. It's also the size of it as well. So it's quite small, but it's quite a long book, a big one, a big one as well. Probably like a couple hundred pages to yeah, like 300 something pages. So this I also got off Amazon. This was released actually very recently. So this is just a compilation of some of his works. Uh, and I really love the cover on this one. It combines a lot of his uh, works like Panorama of Hell. I don't know the names of any of the ones like Zoroku, something like that. But I love the color on this one. Here's the back of it. Classic artwork by Hino, of course. And inside you open it up. Some color pages too. Yeah, because I have read some Kino works, not many. So I figured, well, I don't actually own any Kino Tunkel Borns right now, which is, yeah, I know, blasphemous, but um, might as well pick this up because I don't own anything. You know, a best works book of his would be great for me, you know getting to know his art style more and his, his other works that I haven't read. So there's a good variety of different manga in here, like some of his older stuff, his newer stuff. To be honest, the, the older stuff, the like the print quality, not print quality, like the visuals are a little bit blurred. I don't know if it shows up. For example, this here compared to like this. I don't know why the print quality is a little less great on this, like on the uh, the words as well, the Hinogana. A little bit of like a blurriness to it. Not that high quality quality of um, printing. Yeah, I don't know if it actually shows on camera or not, but there is a big difference between the later works here and the earlier works. But I'll just flick through some stuff. But yeah, Panorama in, in Hell of Hell is here. Cop that release by the English release by Starfruit Books as well. Should be out by the time I put out this video. So yeah, go support them putting out great works from a, a great artist. And an artist I definitely need to read more of. And yeah, that is the best works compilation of Hino Hideshi. Right, so showcased more than I thought I would showcase actually. Because yeah, I just like for me, I just like reaching the 30 minute mark. So we got Hino, Axe, Garo, Taro, Ebisu, Ebisu, of course, uh, Yoshiharu, Sakabashira, we got King Terry, and last but not least, some more Taro. So yeah, I just noticed a lot of these are like Garo axe related, a lot of Heta Uma, some uh, Gekiga, of course, as well. So yeah, very excited for to get into all these books here. Um, I will be very busy uh, reading, so hopefully I can get through all these and you know make future views on them, uh, going through them in more detail. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll be back with some more videos, of course, because, yeah, I've got so much to show. Yeah, thanks for watching. See ya.